dear viewers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with countless blessings. And from these blessings is this tongue which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. This tongue is an amazing creation. It has an ability to taste so many flavors. And it has the ability to be a means towards speaking so many languages. La ilaha illallah. And all this despite its small size. And this tongue, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam, is also a means of gaining us great access to paradise. And this is what makes it amazing as well. And in the same breath, it can also be a means of our destruction. I hope the message is clear. This tongue, despite its small size, is amazing. And they say dynamite comes in small packages. O servants of Allah, it is of utmost importance that we take care of this tongue. The pious predecessors before us used to say that if there was anything that deserved imprisonment for the longest moments of time, then that thing would be the tongue. Meaning keeping the tongue as inactive as possible. And when you keep it active, then you keep it active and moist with that which is good, that which is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we look at this tongue and us in this world, we find that it makes us and breaks us as well. How many a time have you seen a person who you don't know, but they look special and they enter your gathering and they sit down in front of you and you feel this great respect for them. And this respect lasts and lasts and lasts until they open their mouth. They speak. As soon as they speak, you realize the reality of this person. And if they speak in the wrong manner and touch you the wrong way, the respect that you had for them dissolves immediately. And if they speak in the right way, then the respect that you had for them increases abundantly. This is how this tongue can make us or break us. There's a famous story that is narrated and this story happened at the time of Imam Abu Hanifa. Rahimahullah. They say once he was with his students and he was teaching them and the Imam, because um, he was close to his students uh, and he used to spend long hours with them, uh, because of this, when he would sit with them, he would sit in a specific way. He would relax a bit with them. And one day, whilst he was teaching them, this figure entered into the classroom. A wise looking figure. And this figure walked all the way to the front and sat down and remained quiet. And as soon as this figure entered, Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, brought his feet in and sat even more appropriately, out of respect for this newcomer. And this was the manners and morals and etiquettes that the pious before us had. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us these, mon these manners and morals. Ameen. So he brought his feet in and he sat appropriately. And this continued as this person remained in the gathering. And Abu Hanifa continued teaching his lessons. Until a point came where Abu Hanifa rahimahullah was teaching the book of Siyam. As is stated in some narrations. He was teaching... Uh, his students, the rulings pertaining to the month of fasting. And whilst he was teaching this, this man put up his hand to ask a question. So out of great respect, Abu Hanifa stopped the lesson and took the question of this man. So this man said, I have a question. What happens if the first of Ramadan happens to fall on Eid day? Happens to fall on Eid day. Now we know on Eid day, a person is not allowed to fast. But when the first of Ramadan happens, a person has to fast. So this person said, what happens if the first of Ramadan happens to fall on Eid day? So Abu Hanifa rahimahullah smiled, because this, this is something impossible. So he smiled and said, if the first of Ramadan falls on Eid day, then it's time for Abu Hanifa to stretch his feet out again. Meaning that this person 
who he had so much respect for, and this person who he thought was so wise, these thoughts vanished. When? When this person opened his mouth, when he spoke. Because when he spoke, he made clear the reality of his innate, the reality of the intrinsic. And it was clear that there was no wisdom present in this particular person. Thus, yes, our tongue makes us and breaks us. If we look at us and our tongues and the hereafter, then understand that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a person will come to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on the day of Qiyam. And this person will have a mountain of deeds, of hajj, of salah, of zakah, of charity, and so on and so forth. A mountain of deeds. And this person will be proud of this mountain, only to find that this tongue was a means of his regret. Why? When he lived in this world, he never used it properly. He insulted people. He usurped the rights of people. He backbited against people. Thus, the day of Qiyamah, which is a day of justice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will repay back those who this man harmed with his tongue by taking away his good deeds and giving it to them. Taking away his good deeds and giving it to them till this mountain becomes a molehill. And this molehill becomes no more. And it might just be that there are many, many more people who require redemption. So what, what will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take their sins and give it to this person. Until those, sin, those sins start amassing and amassing and amassing until his mountain of good deeds became a mountain of evil deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us.